Hi, my name is Mihai. I'm doing a review today of these guys, the Oticon Real One. Um, so my um, my issue is I have genetic hearing loss uh, in my family. Um, get it from my dad's side, and basically it means that I have in the middle frequencies I have um, a lot of loss, and it's getting it's gotten worse since um, I've been in my early twenties. I'm in my mid thirties now, and so it's just going to keep advancing. Um, and I did finally, um, you know, make the decision to get a hearing aid. Um, I ended up going with Oticon because um, I think they're 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 a trusted name. You know, people know the company. They've been doing it for a long time, um, so they're going to have a lot of the um, the core signs down. I picked the the real ones because they do um, they have AI built in, so they can help rather than just kind of amplifying everything. They amplify more of the sounds that you're interested in, like speech and the things that are in front of you, and less noise. I did, before these uh, Oticon Real Ones, I did use uh, hearing aids from a company called Whisper. They're a newer company, and they are really all into the AI approach as well, um, but they, they take a different approach where they have a separate, um, they call it the, the brain. Uh, it's about the size of maybe um, half the size of your phone, and um, it sends the audio signal from the hearing aids to this brain, does this processing, uh, and then sends it back. Um, and comparing the Oticons to the Whispers, um, I think, you know, the Whisper company had a lot of things that were just around the hearing aid that were really nice, like the fitting process and all of that stuff. Uh, but the actual hearing aid itself was, was worse. And that's where I think Oticon being a trusted name that's been around really shines. Um, their AI filtering was better, but just overall, they're just better as a hearing aid. They had um, all these extra features that I'll talk about. Um, so yeah, that's why I chose them. Um, in order to get fitted, I ended up going to my first, uh, my doctor, and um, they were really kind of strange about it. They, were, they said they couldn't tell me the price, um, and I told them, well, let's ignore insurance. Just tell me what you would charge me direct. And they said, well, we have these distributors. We don't know. We don't know. And eventually, they said it would cost like $7,000. Um, then I, you know, of course, immediately jumped on the internet, looked it up, found Zip Hearing, and they said it was going to be $4,800, and they would hook me up with a local provider uh, who would do the actual fitting. And through them, I'd also get um, a warranty and some additional things. And uh, it was really funny that the provider they ended up hooking me up with was actually the provider I was already using. Um, so literally nothing changed except going through Zip Hearing and they knocked like, you know, $2,200 off the price. So that's awesome. Uh, so I really like that. Um, now, what I like about the hearing aid itself, um, I, I hear a lot better. Um, no question about it. Um, it's just... I. In quiet situations, you know, it gives me the amplification I need. But then when I go um, out and do things like um, I do, I do improv. I go out with friends to dinner and all these things. And it's more social situations where you have a lot of noise. Maybe you're not looking at exactly who's speaking. Um, they balance that, bringing the amplification, but also not amplifying noise, like you get in a restaurant or a bar or something. And um, that's that's been really really great um, compared to the whisper hearing aids and just hearing aids that don't have that feature. And I also really like the phone integration. Um, you know, you get uh, Bluetooth, which is great, so you can listen to music and do phone calls. But, you know, right here, I can just push this button on my home screen, basically, and change all my presets. Uh, so that's really easy, really nice. Um, like I said, it's good in noise. Um, some things I don't like, the charger. Um, it's a corded charger, uh, so you, it has to be plugged in. Um, which, you know, I like the, the kind of the wireless headphone approach where, you know, you put the hearing aids in a case, that case has a battery and it can charge it on the go, but then also at home at night, you just plug that case into the wall and it charges both the case and the hearing aids. Uh, they do have one of those, it's called the smart charger, but it's like $225. So it's, it's quite expensive. So it's just something to be mindful. Um, maybe if I could go back, I would choose to get the replaceable batteries. They're quite easy to replace. Uh, the, lo uh, the battery life is 30 hours versus 18, and you know, it's not $225. Um, other things that are, I think um, are a little weird is um, the Oticon app isn't very good, but like I said, you don't really need it very much. Um, and uh, yeah, I would, I'd say that the other thing is that the range um, when connecting and streaming from your phone isn't great. It's like three feet before it starts cutting out. Uh, that's not ideal. And it does use the microphone on your phone when you're making phone calls, not the microphone in the hearing aid, um, which, again, you have to be pretty close to your phone when talking. Um, and, um, yeah, that's about it that I don't like. Um, overall, though, I do think the pros way outweigh the cons. I'm very happy with it, and I'm 
probably going to stick with otakon. I'm certainly going to stick with hearing aids. So.